essential for your marketing purposes. Now content only works if you've got a funnel or funnels that you can send people that see your content to. So if you're just kickstarting your business out, I don't want you wasting any time on content. You need to have the foundation built. That's your messaging. You need to have your funnels. You need to have your offer down. You need to have all of those things rock solid before you start investing time in content because you can get people warmed up with your content, but if you have no place to send them, you're wasting your time. So case in point, when I, when I made my first online business, which was animation training, I spent a whole year just making content. And I was putting all my time into making the content and that didn't give me, and I was building relationships, right? But I didn't have the time to actually like make a product and do sales. So it was a problem. And had I done, if I could do it again, which I have in the, you know, I have, then what we do is we build a foundation and then we layer the content on. Cause, it, cause the, the basis of the content is going to be your messaging. What is your core messaging about your brand? Like who, who do you serve? What's the value that only you provide that, that keeps you from being a commodity? And most importantly, why are you passionate about helping your clients? So when you can have that message and, and also a timeline, right? I'll help you get this result in this time. So once you can have that messaging and then you also have a process, right? Classic example of a process is Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Visionary Planner, we got eight steps to build your business, right? So you need to have some sort of very clear process so that your content can always anchor back to that. So once you have that, then you, and you've got that foundation built, now we can start thinking about content. So the big misconception with content is that people feel they have to just endlessly make it, and that's not true. I have a system where, like you're seeing this video now, so I, I from a very high level, I make a video or two, and then that video gets repurposed in lots of different ways. So I can take my, let's just do this. So I take a video, and then I go and I get it transcribed. So it's turned into, uh, just kind of gobbledygook. And then that goes to a writer and that gets turned into a nice blog article. And then that same article, I can extract social media bits out. So I can have the same content with different ideas in it turn into different content pieces. And then you create images for that. You use something like Canva. And now from one video, let's say it's a 15 minute video, you've got a blog, you got a video, you've got an audio file, you've got a blog article, You've got some some social media content posts. So you've got all this great content with that's sending people into your funnel. Because you know the content is always talking about your process, which is tied to your messaging, and that's, that's agitating pain. If you have this problem, then we've got a solution. If you want to know more about our solution, go to our funnels. So it's pretty basic how that all works. Now, the thing with content is you're going to have – and you're a thought leader, so you're going to have to be on camera. So if you're freaked out to be on camera, like, Mike, I got a face for radio, then that's cool, but you got to get over that. People want to see you. They want to bond with you. They want to know, like, and trust you. So it's absolutely integral that you get confident on camera. Now, for me personally, I was a massive introvert, and I forced myself. I, I, I was an animator, so, like, my job was to hide behind a screen and, you know, <laughs> not have to talk to anybody. It was awesome. Uh, but I re recognized that that wasn't going to help me get my message out there and build a business that I wanted. So I spent five years – this is back when I lived in Hollywood. I spent five years – studying at the best acting schools. And I didn't want to be an actor, but I really wanted to understand performance and mo most importantly, get confident being on camera or being presenting, let's just say. So I did uh, acting, I did stand-up comedy, I did improv, like all, all of this was completely the opposite of my personality, totally freaky. But I forced myself to do it and it didn't just happen, you know, I didn't take one class, you know, I did it for five years. So if that is you and you're like nervous to be on camera and you got the, you got the willies when you're, you know, when you think about public speaking, then find something you can do to get over that. Now the easiest low hanging fruit that I'd recommend is take an improv class. Most cities have some sort of improv. Improv, if you don't know, it's just the art of being in the moment and reacting to things. And you don't, it's not, it's not being funny. It's just about thinking on your feet and being confident in the decision that you're making, the creative decision that you're making. So, so improv is great. There's also services like Toastmaster. I think it's called Toastmasters where you learn public speaking. But long story short, you got to get confident with the performance. The next thing with content is you have to get confident with the tech, with the technology. Now, 
fortunately, it's so easy these days to pull your phone out. Like you literally, if you've seen some of my, if you've seen any of my content on Instagram, I literally pull my phone out, start recording. Hey guys, blah, 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 blah. And then when I'm done, I hit stop. And then I go in and I edit it. I'll just show you real quick. Well, I won't show you, but basically use your phone. It's really, it's really, really simple. And then you just upload the video after you edit it. You want to edit like the beginning out where you're pushing record. You want to edit the ending out where you're hitting stop. But once you have that, you can just upload that to your social platform and add a little text blurb. So it's, it's really, really basic. So that's one tech solution is just use your phone. Another, like I'm using now is I got my, my desktop computer. I've got a nice, I don't know if you can see it. I've got a nice microphone on a little stand and I don't have to like, I don't have to talk into it. Right. I just have it there and it, it's, you know, maybe, I don't know a foot away from my mouth and it sounds just fine. And then I use something like ScreenFlow. Now in this instance, I'm drawing on my screen and I'm using a tool on the uh, the Mac called Desk Scribble. I don't know if you can see it up there, but it's called Desk Scribble. And I also use, I don't know if you can see this, but I use a Wacom tablet. So it's like a hundred dollar little device, USB, it plugs right in. And now I can do whiteboard videos. And then through my editing software, which is ScreenFlow, screen flow i'm able to i think i'll just put myself down here i'm able to turn my video into a round format like you see here and then just just pop me in the bottom corner and couldn't be easier so content should not be something that should freak you out and when it comes to topics if you're like oh what do i talk about mike well, the first thing is ask your audience, ask your clients, especially if you're doing sales calls, as people have objections or questions about your process or your offer, you can start writing those down and flagging them for future topics. Uh, but what I like to do is I just look at my process. I look at the different sub sort of uh, topics within my process and I just pick one to talk about. Pretty basic, right? Uh, if you're a real expert, you should be able to just get on your platform and talk about anything that is asked of you. It's, you shouldn't have to prepare. I don't, pre when I'm doing these content videos, I literally know what the topic is and I just start talking because I'm an expert. I don't need to like rehearse or, you know, write it all down. I'm just like, you know, I'm just off the cuff because you can spend a lot of time on content creation and, and it's all, your content is just about giving people a sample of what it's like to work with you, like proving and demonstrating that you're an expert. And so you don't need this overbaked thing. You just need to be authentic and show up and, and be yourself. Now, another thing I want to talk about is if this is like a calendar and this is like week one, week two, week three, week four. So you'll notice with my content, I have a video like this drop every Tuesday. And then I can take the older videos and I can promote them. So let's say every Tuesday I have a new video, but every Wednesday and every Thursday I can go to social media or to my email marketing list and promote the old videos. Now, one thing I'm going to start also doing is maybe a Thursday or Friday is doing a live FAQ, right? So that means in this scenario, I've got four 20 minute videos roughly. So that's going to be with editing and everything. That's like three hours or less. And then I got to write the text. So that's maybe four hours in a month. And then if I'm going to do these lives, that's another two hours. So you're looking at four to six hours, of content creation per a month to keep your list engaged. And then once I have this, I put this, like this video in particular, this goes on all of my social feeds. So I use a service called Restream. So what I'll do is I'll make the video in advance. I can also do it live, but because I've got little kids and I stream these, I'm in Europe. So when I stream these, it's like bath time for kids, which means, uh, uh, my wife would uh, not be appreciative. I can't, I can't help the kids tonight because I'm going to be uh, live streaming. So I pre-record these videos and then I load them into Restream and I set when those are going to go live and I put a little image that I make in Canva, like a thumbnail image. And then I can confidently know that that is going to go streaming to all my social platforms. It streams to my Facebook, my LinkedIn, my YouTube, you name it. And, and then I also know that my team is available checking those feeds out and they're answering questions if people have questions. So it's a really powerful tool to use something like Restream. And then I'm able to email my list and say, hey guys, I'm doing a live stream right now, check it out. And then the day after I can be like, hey, if you missed it, here's a replay link and send them back to the group. So I like to host these. The, the main channel I like to send these to is my Facebook group so that my team can engage with people. And 
that gives me, like I said, that gives me a touch point to email my list. It gives me a touch point to let people in the group know about it. And then also my sales team, they can reach out to any prospects who are on the fence about anything or have objections. They can reach out and be like, hey, Mike just made a new video about content creation or about whatever. So it's really, really powerful to put this minimum amount of work per month, right? That's not weekly, that's per month to get all this great content and touch points with my audience. So it's working for me. It's going to definitely work for you. And it doesn't take a lot of time. And you don't have to prep. Like I'm saying, you just know your topic. You're an expert, super basic. As long as you're comfortable with the tech, right? So do a couple of tech rehearsals ahead of time, but it could not be any easier. So there you go. If you have any questions about this, then leave a comment somewhere around this video. And uh, 